Over the next couple of days, the international spotlight will be shining even brighter on President Biden's time on the world stage, including that first face-to-face -face Vladimir Putin since President Biden was sworn in. Let's bring in tonight's Dream Team panel to debate Fox News contributor Jessica Tarlov and the host of The Next Revolution, Steve Hilton. Welcome back to you both. Hi, Shannon. Thank you. So there has been some criticism and some praise for President Biden and how he's doing so far overseas. Here is a snippet of a few of the things getting attention that he's had to say. I know you all know, but a lot of people may not know what COVID is. By harassing the full potential of uh, those who are harassing, we're going to have to try to change things. I'm sorry I'm going to get in trouble with staff. I don't do this the right way. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble with my, my staff. Yeah, go ahead, but I pretend that you didn't answer you. All right, Steve, I don't assess that you are a fan of the president, but how do you think he's doing so far on the world stage? Okay, I'm going to pass on commenting on any of that, and, and let's focus on the substance and the fact that there wasn't very much substance. It seems to me that this whole trip so far for Biden has been just a branding exercise, and the brand that he's been pushing is America is back. But the question is, back doing what? There wasn't really any substantive outcome that anyone can point to, either from the G7 or from NATO. And on the big question, which is China, as we just heard in that report, in fact, we took a number of steps backwards. The whole argument that the left, the Democrats and the media used to make against President Trump when he was in office was he's, he's standing up to China, he's confronting China, but he's going it alone and he's not working with allies and that's not a good strategy. Biden said he'd be different. He would work with our allies in order to bring them together to confront China. Exactly the opposite happened. The statements on China were weaker than we've seen before. And so in that central goal of confronting the central strategic question facing America and the world, Biden totally failed to mobilize allies against China. And that is a long-term disaster for, for America and the world. So, Jessica, what do you think he needs to do with regard to Vladimir Putin? Because there's been this back and forth about, oh, President Trump was too comfortable with Vladimir Putin. He was too easy on him. But we have, you know, when you look at the record of sanctions and other things that happened, uh, it doesn't match up with the rhetoric, which he often said, I think we should have a relationship, but I am going to be tough on him. Um, President Biden now goes into this with uh, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline having been granted in Putin's favor and a number of issues with cyber hacking and other difficult things he's going to have to raise. Elect um, Navalny among them. Uh, what does he have to do at that table to come away and say this was a win for the U.S.? Well, I think he has to basically say that all of Putin's canned answers, which we saw earlier uh, this weekend in the NBC interview, are inadequate. Uh, Navalny is top of mind. We saw Putin kind of laugh at the idea that he is a killer, which President Biden called him a few months ago in an interview and is absolutely correct. And then he said he couldn't really be held accountable if Navalny died in Russian custody. We all know if Navalny passes away um, in this camp that he's being held at, that it is Vladimir Putin's fault and the people that support him. So I think Biden has to push that first and foremost. And on the China front, I would add, I was glad that there was mention of what's going on with the mass genocide of Uyghurs um, mm -hmm. in the eastern part of China, something that was not raised under President Trump. Uh, so on the Russia front, cyber hacks, obviously, Putin has said, we'll cooperate, but we didn't do it. We need to get past that. There need to be real sanctions that are going to be on the table if this continues. It's the number one threat that, that we're facing. And just in general, we need to make sure that our election security going forward is safe. We know that uh, Russia and China are the number one perpetrators of that, with Russia really leading the way the last couple of election cycles. Um, so those issues are really top of mind. But Navalny, number one, he's incredibly important, the leading opposition mm -hmm. figure in Russia and a real beacon uh, for the chance of democracy in that country. Okay, and to my recollection, the State Department under the Trump administration was calling out the Uyghur genocide and what's going on there, but there certainly needs to be a lot tougher action and coordinated action um, with the international community if that is going to be changed and they're going to be held accountable. Let's talk about COVID because um, some people were not that impressed with the G7's ultimate determinations on COVID. Um, the, the editorial board over the Wall Street Journal saying this, who's on first, again, meaning the WHO, like you're going to give them another shot at this, which is apparently the G7's plan, it says the world's leaders want the same WHO that failed in its first COVID-19 origin study to do another one, this time with feeling, was the question, Steve. And we heard Secretary of State Blinken say this weekend um, that the first one was a disaster. But we are giving them another chance, and we expect it to be better in China to cooperate. What do you expect? 
Well, it was absolutely pathetic what came out of the G7 and, and this quest for, you know, some kind of further inquiry. More and more information is coming out about both parts of this. Where did the virus come from? Everything now points to the real uh, circumstantial evidence that we've seen, for example, the lab workers getting sick and all the other things we've been talking about for weeks, that the most likely origin is, from, is a leak, an accidental leak, no one here, and certainly not me, is accusing anyone of doing it deliberately, an accidental leak from the Wuhan lab. That points to China. They clearly covered it up. They clearly tried to pretend it wasn't a pandemic. Then they protected their, um, their interests while allowing the, the pandemic to grow and get going by letting people travel all around the world. So you can certainly blame China for that, and the G7 utterly failed to do that. But the other part of it that is so important has just been completely ignored, which is the role of this, the uh, National Institutes of Health, the NIAID, Dr. Fauci, in funding the work that was going on in the Wuhan lab. What were they, what leaks, what were they working on and why? The answer points back here to America. And what was really troubling was that that was not discussed at all. None of the other leaders seem to want to get to the bottom of it because they don't want to offend the two most powerful governments in the world, the US and China, who jointly in this case look like they're responsible for the origin of the pandemic. Uh, very quickly, Jessica, do you think we get a final answer on the origins? Uh, well, certainly not by the end of this week, but I am hopeful that there will be some sort of independent investigation, which I know is kind of an oxymoron when you're talking about China, uh, but that we, we, we will be able to dig deeper into this past what the, the WHO has done, which they seem to be completely beholden to them. Uh, the New York Times, actually, a reporter just called up the Wuhan lab and thought, I'll see if I can get through to someone and talk to one of the top virologists there who was definitely taking the CCP line on this. Uh, so we know that people are going to be as protective as possible about what has happened there, but we certainly need to get to the bottom of it. And I imagine that we'll have some sort of reevaluation of gain of function research. I'm not tying the U.S. culpability to this. I think that that's a little bit strong at this point, but I think that that will become an international discussion going yeah. forward if an mm -hmm. accident like this could happen again. Yeah. Still many more questions than answers, but we're getting new clues every day yep. and getting a better picture of the puzzle. Okay, Jessica and Steve, thank you both very much. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you, Shannon.